All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the January 13th, 2021 meeting of the East Long Meadow Conservation Commission. Uh, at this time, I need to ask if anybody in the viewing audience is recording the meeting. And if so, please raise your hand and identify yourself. Oh, looks like we got Tony, too. Yeah, you got me. Okay. Um, we all good with the audience? Nobody uh, has said that they're um, recording the meeting? Yep, you're all set. Okay. First item on the agenda is approval of the December 23rd, 2020 minutes. Um, I had sent in a change on it last night, um, just adding that we continued the public hearing on the ANRAD. Um, did anybody else have any comments or corrections to the minutes? Yes, on the first item, um, request for certificate of compliance for 530 Farm Road. Um, I felt the first paragraph needs some clarification. The seller's attorney, it might help to put the name of the attorney because then every sentence says he, 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 but it's not too clear who it is. So I think if we put the name in there, because you just previously talked about Clerk Jeffrey Bosworth. So as I was reading them, I said, it's not too clear. So, And then at the second paragraph, um, it says that, that I expressed concern about voting before seeing the plan, the revised plan, and discussing the site visit. And not amongst the other commissioners, but at the next con conservation commission meeting. I wasn't going to go out and talk to the commissioners outside of the meeting. I wanted that clarified. Okay. So. Okay, I can make that change. Thank you. Um, just just a, a comment on what Francis said. <clears throat> um, basically, that statement, the seller's attorney, what I was doing, I was, I was clarifying it for the current owner, um, the reason why they had to file the certificate of compliance. And I did not mention the name of the attorney. I don't remember what it was. Oh, okay. so that's why it's just the seller's attorney. So I think it should stay the way it is. Oh, okay. So these are all your comments. These are all my comments. Oh, that's yes. what wasn't clear to me. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. you can clear that up or it's just me who didn't understand. Okay. I can revise it to make it a little clearer. Yeah. I didn't realize the whole thing was all Jeff's co co comments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I've got. Thank you. Um, did, did anybody else have any comments? So then I will entertain a motion for approval of the December 9th, 2020 minutes with the seller's attorney name added in paragraph number one. So moved. Seconded. All right, roll call vote. Um, Francis? Aye. Tom? Craig, I'm not gonna vote, I wasn't there. Oh, thank you. Uh, Tony? Aye. Jeff. Aye. Elizabeth. Aye. And I am a yes vote also. Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda that we have is the Certificate of Compliance for Old Farm Road. Um, the drawing from Mike Smith came out. Um, the only thing I wasn't sure of at this point was if uh, it had been recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Do you know if it has, Bethany? Uh, Mike is here. Do you want me to bring him in? Sure. Oh, I see he's in the audience. Yep. Yeah, so it has not been recorded. I was waiting for common and for the approval of the certificate of compliance, and then I will set the monuments and record the plan. Okay. I wasn't sure. I didn't want to record anything without approval of the board. Okay. Um, I know I sent in um, that I was okay with the plan. I was pretty sure Jeff did also. Yes. Um, other members of the commission? 
I'm all set. I'm okay with it. Yeah, it looks good to me too. I'm good. Okay. Um, so I will entertain a motion for approval of the certificate of compliance for 53 Old Farms Road with the condition that the revised plan be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. So moved. So moved. <laughs> uh, can we have a second? <laughs> second. All right. Um, all right, once again, a roll call vote. Uh, Francis? Aye. Elizabeth? Aye. Tony? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm a yes vote also. Um, next item on the agenda is the request for certificate of compliance for 8 Bella Vista Drive. Uh, that came in a little while ago. Um, there is a letter in the file. I believe that is also from uh, Mike Smith. Does anybody have any questions or comments or concerns? We did not go out and do a site visit on this. Um, by looking at the drawing and having been out on the, the lot next door to this, um, there's, it's minimal uh, uh, into the into the wetland and the, and the permanent markers have been set. So basically I would say it, it looks pretty good. Anyone else? Um, I, I would agree with that also. Um, so I will entertain, this is obviously in uh, phase one of Bella Vista. Um, I will entertain a motion for approval of the certificate of compliance for eight Bella Vista Drive. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, roll call vote again. Francis? Aye. Tom? Aye. Tony? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Elizabeth? Aye. Uh, I'm a yes vote also. All righty, moving right along. Next item on our agenda is the continued public hearing for the request for an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation for 43 South Bend Lane. And I believe Heather is in the, uh, is an attendee and we can welcome her into the meeting. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Awesome. <laughs> um, in order to move forward this, we need you to do some screen sharing with the plans. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got bought a webcam for my desktop, so I might be actually be able to do it, but I don't know if I want to tempt that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we did do another site visit where we did another good hike. It was a much nicer day. Um, we got to inspect the rest of the uh, wetland boundaries. Um, I don't really have anything else to add at this point. Um, we do have a continuation of the public hearing. So I, I guess at this point, um, I would like to ask, and if there's any members of the public that wish to comment or have a question regarding this filing, uh, to please raise your hand so we can bring you into the meeting. I think you're all set. All righty. Um, okay, there's no further comments from the public. Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none. Um, Francis? Aye. Elizabeth? Aye. Tony? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I am a yes vote also. Um, all right, so now it comes back to the commission. Um, any comments or anything from the commission? Well, I just want to say with the second site visit was much more pleasant to walk 
<laughs> and it was uh, a much better view of uh, the landscape without being covered with snow. And uh, it, the delineations look, look pretty good in my opinion. Yeah, I would say the, uh, the delineation uh, looked real good too. One of the uh, good things about this site visit was that it was after a, a fairly significant rainfall mm -hmm. and, and the river was much higher than it was uh, in the previous site visit. And, and all the markings with the high water mark and, um, and the, the wetland lines were, uh, were, were very satisfactory in my opinion. Um, so moving forward, the only thing that you know, we need to do with the ANRAD, similar to a notice of intent, is um, we, we can put in a, uh, an order of conditions on this. Um, and, and based on the fact that we're really just a, approving the delineation, um, the only condition I was thinking that we really needed on this um, was that no work in the resource area um, shall be done without the filing uh, of a notice of intent. Um, what do you think, is that okay with you, Heather? Yeah. I have a question to the chair. May I ask a question at this sure. time? Sure. Yep. Okay. So I had one point of concern. I'm not sure if it's, this is the right time to bring it up, but um, the river had a tree, a, a large size tree that fell into it and was blocking the flow. And I noticed that it caused the water overflow to be to come very close to the paved road, which is an actual street with houses on it. And I was concerned about if that's within our jurisdiction to, to say anything about. Um, all the markings were fine, everything looked good. That was the only thing I was concerned about it as we did the walk through. Is this not the right time to talk about that or um not necessarily, but uh, but something like that is okay. And and when there's an issue, you know, the, typically what we've done is we would ask is the the property owner to at least contact the commission um, prior to doing any tree removal, especially if they were bringing some work in or some equipment in, in in order to remove the tree. Yeah, the the only way to remove it would be get, bringing equipment down close to the river and it might cause more harm than what, you know, leaving it. So if it, if it should cause an overflow onto the road, then, then the owner would contact us if he has to do something, right? Yeah, and it might be a DPW. If it's gonna impact the road, it might be a DPW um, concern. Oh, yes, because it's on the easement, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. Um, any further discussion on this? Um, hearing none, I will entertain a motion for approval of the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation for 43 South Bend Lane. Uh, is that including the, uh, the conditions? Um, I, w I would say yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I do feel there should be some conditions related to the river. That is in the wetlands area, right? Of course. Okay. Francis, I think when they submit a NOI for the work, that would be that a would condition come in. to have. Okay, thank you. Um, That's what I was confused about this process. Okay, thank um, you. <laughs> I, I think maybe not necessarily on this. Um, because the work that would be done, I, I don't believe, would be close to the river at all. Yeah, Heather, I see you're, you're agreeing with that. Yeah, any work that is proposed within a buffer zone or resource area would require filing a notice of intent. Okay, okay thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm all set. So then, when... I'll entertain a motion for approving the, the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation with the condition that no work in resource areas will be done without the filing of a notice of intent. Very good. 
some of second second <laughs> too slow to right. motion made and seconded uh, I will ask if there's any further discussion all right hearing none we will move on to the roll call vote Francis aye Tom aye Tony yes Elizabeth aye Jeff aye and I am a yes vote also. <clears throat> All right. Um, moving on to project monitoring, I, I see we have some people in the audience um, that, that are attendees. There was an email that came out today regarding some work um, on Denslow Road. It was a submittal by John Mayberry. Did people get a chance to look at that at all? I did. And slower. I looked at it. Mm -hmm. I did too. I did too, but I'm bringing it up right now. The carports, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and they're in attendance. Um, and and essentially, what it, it looks to me is, you know, they're putting in these carports to put some solar panels on them. Um, and essentially, what we're just being asked to look at tonight is if we think we would require. The, the filing of a request for determination of applicability. Um, in the front of the property, there is a 200 foot riverfront buffer zone. Uh, this work is being done at the other end of the property um, where we are, I would say adjacent. The 100 foot buffer zone is in the corner of the property. Um, so I guess it's just comments from the commissioners. Do we think we wanna have a request for determination filed or are we good? And we could send those comments to the uh, planning board that we were all set and did not require a request for determination. I'm good with it. I, I really don't think we need an RDA on this. It, it's, it's far enough away. I agree. Okay. Um, John, did you want anything? I see John Mayberry's out there. I, I would tend to agree also. This isn't something we need to vote on. There's not a filing here. Um, but Mr. Mayberry would like to comment. Am I here? We got you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shh. You can hear my dog, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I, I guess I just want to appreciate the time. I just want to say my appreciation for your time taking it up tonight. I am trying to take advantage of the great weather and would like to get it off to the planning board. So I'm planning on a submittal uh, for uh, the site plan. Um, possibly, I think it's a variance for a need for one or whatever. I, I don't have all the terminology pegged, but I did hire the professionals to go out there and, you know, make sure I did the right thing. So I appreciate it. All righty. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Okay. Take care, John. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, project monitoring. The next one that we had on the, uh, uh, the spreadsheet was Hidden Ponds. Um, there's really not a lot. I thought we actually had to respond to an, a letter from, from Mr. Joyce, but I, I don't believe so. Um, he did send out an email um, earlier this week regarding, uh, he was questioning my response and the fact that uh, Rob Levesque couldn't get a hold of me, but um, this project was actually, the basin was designed by Philippe that works for Rob. I had been in touch with him, sending him a lot of emails and and I did speak with Rob the other night. One of the things that we need to do to look at this, and, and we talked about doing a core sample in the basin. And the, the other one that uh, wanted to do, and it, I would love to try and get there, um, but it is gonna be kind of a, a short notice or maybe a little bit more, um, but we are actually gonna set it up to try and go out there during the rain and, and actually physically measure the outflow coming out of the basin. Um, and so it's just kind of on hold right now before they come in with a report. 
um, regarding that and, until we get a rainstorm where we can actually go out and measure the, uh, the outflow of the basin. Um, but other than that, right now, um, I was all set with Hidden Ponds. Did anybody else have any other comments? Let me get this straight. You want, you want to go out in a rainstorm and measure outflow? Rob Levesque does, yes. Yeah, you, so you're going to measure the rain? The rain? The outflow then, of the basin. Versus the outflow. Yep. The, the, the rain calculations are, the, the amount of rain calculations are on the National Weather Service website. Um, so those are pretty accurate based on the amount of rainfall versus what is the outflow. Yeah. All right. I just think that, uh, so you're, the end game here is to have them redesign it, tear it up, and rebuild it? Uh, in, in my opinion right now, the, what we are, I'm just trying to accomplish is making sure that the basin is functioning properly. The, the basin that was professionally designed? Correct. Okay, got it. The, 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 the basin was, and we'll go over this, I'll, I'll reiterate it again, I guess. The basin was professionally designed. However, the construction of the basin has not been in compliance with the design just simply based on the fact that there was supposed to be no erosion going into it. And there has been erosion going into it for over a year and a half. So, yeah, so your contention is the basin needs to be clean and then measured afterwards or measured it, before? And I believe I've been clear at the meetings that yes, I do not believe the basin is functioning properly. When we were out there, when I was out there looking at it and we sent the pictures in, with approximately two inches of water coming out of the outflow after only 1.43 inches of rain in a 16 hour period was much higher. I forget the exact number of what they said the outflow was uh, for that amount of rain, but it was minimal. And the water was coming out at a rapid pace and it was after the rain, not even during the rain. Um, and so, yes, I question that it's functioning properly. Which is why, we, why we've asked <laughs> right. for this. Right. So, yeah, the, the rainfall is X over Y period, but in order to get an accurate reading, you probably need to measure it over an extended period. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so there will just be in touch, and there will be something coming out for site visits on that. I have a, a question on that. If I remember correctly, at a previous meeting, we talked about pre-construction drainage and post-construction drainage. And there's only one drainage system, if I'm not mistaken. So that was still a question in my mind that, you know, I thought might be cleared up by Rob Levesque. Yeah, and, and, and the issue is there with, with the pre- and post-construction is how much water is actually flowing into the basin that is not coming out of the stormwater management system. There okay. will be less once there is grass in all the surrounding areas versus what it is there now for uh, where it's just essentially bare clay. Okay, so we will get a report on the pre and post um, efficacy of this drainage basin, right? Um, I'm, I'm gonna say okay. yes. Yeah. I feel like I need to hear something about, you know, the design and how, how like right now it's getting an overflow or whatever's happening to it, we'll find out. And then what about post-construction? What, what does he predict the results would be? I mean, we, we need to find out if this is adequate. If Correct. This is done. Right, and okay, thank you. Yeah, and you know, and and that's why we've asked for an, an an engineer to review this. Right, that's what I thought. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty, the next item on the agenda was 176 Chestnut Street. Um, we did not go do a site visit there last weekend or the weekend before when we were out. Um, but it, it, at this point, I don't know. Um, I, I think at this point we maybe just need to send a letter.
saying that any work that's done on the property per the order of conditions in uh, the Conservation Commission needs to be contacted? Prior to. Yep. And, and I guess maybe we could enclose a copy of the order of conditions for the homeowner. Anybody else have any comments? No, nope, hearing none. Uh, Rebecca, if you could draft a, a letter for that. Sure, we'll get something out. Okay, thank you. Um, Zero Baldwin Street, we had a pre-construction meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, I was not in attendance. Um, comments or any uh, report from any of the commissioners that were there? I have uh, something to add. Um, I believe they will be filing an extension of the order of conditions for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So just a heads up on that. How close is that to expiring? Um, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. They just sent it in. June 13th, this coming summer. Okay. Okay. It was two and a half years, it was June two, 2018 when we uh, approved the project. Okay. Um, Rob and I discussed it when we were out at the, the site visit and uh, he, he stated to me that they would be filing for an extension uh, because this is, the NOI is gonna be running out in June, so. Um, Pretty much it was Francis and I were there, uh, Will was there, um, plus uh, there was a, some tree service, uh, Bill Skinner, the excavator, and who's gonna do the excavation work, and um, uh, there was someone else out there, I forget who, but uh, basically the flagging is all, uh, has been redone, it's very clear, uh, we walked the perimeter along the uh, pretty much the right side towards the river, which is the only side that has any impact to to the wetlands. There's there's not a whole lot of impact uh, to the wetlands as as far as the the base part of the of the project, but uh, everything seemed to be in order, and it was agreed that they could go forward and and cut the trees but they could do no stumping or any uh, soil disturbance uh, until the erosion controls were put in place. And that once the erosion controls would be put in place, we'd be notified so we could go out and inspect that. Mm -hmm. that, that was pretty much it. No, so they were preparing to start relatively quickly. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I, I got that impression. Yeah, and before they do any grading or any, you know, the groundwork, after they clear, they're going to put in the erosion controls and then contact us for a site visit to check them out. And there's an area where there's, um, there's a big decline. Um, it's not in the wetlands, it's still, you know, um, but it's, it's that side where the wetlands are. And they're gonna fill it in, which I was very happy about. They're filling in that big, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, what do you call that? Where Depression. the area where I'm asking Jeff, sorry, Jeff, you know, that area where there's. It, yeah, there's, there's, there's a. I call it like a, a gully. large gully uh, depression um, between two, two mounds. They're going to be leveling, filling that in to, to kind of level it out. Yeah. And they, they will be cutting. Um, with, uh, with, we annotated, they put some, uh, Rob put some white uh, surveyor's tape around a, a few of the trees that are right on the, uh, I guess you would say on the borderline of, of the, uh, the delineation line of, of the wetlands, which we agreed would um, need to be removed because of some were rotted, decayed, some one had fallen, uh, but they were right on the line. So they, by disturbing the earth, it would, they would probably come down anyway. So it was like maybe five or six trees that we agreed mm -hmm. that it was okay uh, to take down. 
So Jeff, to be clear, you, you gave them permission to cut the trees down without installing installing steel fence first. The, the 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 trees will be cut because the bulk of the area, like ninety eight percent, is not anywhere near the wetlands, and it's right on the edge of the buffer zone. So. And most of the trees out there, with the exception of a few, uh, mainly the ones that we allowed them to mark with the uh, white flagging tape, which are right along on the on the line, uh, are big old pine trees. Uh, the remainder, it's pretty much scrub trees and uh, a lot of gray birch in there. Um, but most trees are probably six inches in diameter or less um, for the for the majority. That, that's not the point. The point is to use heavy machinery to do it. So you generally want to install a cell fence before you start any type of work. Right. We're going out to see the silt fence as soon as they clear the, the you know, the, I don't know what you call it. The, as soon the, as they clear the area the, within the, the buffer zone. The, the These problem, trees, you know, are right on the, the buffer zone. I mean, they're not in, aren't they on the limit of work line, right? Right. Yeah. Bas basically, it's so dense in there with these uh, scrub trees, um, that there's no way you can get in there to put in silt fence without cutting something just clearing there they're that's, clear. that, that, that's not true that, this is a standard practice in the industry all right so moving forward you, they should install the cell fence first i guess my comment um that, that i'm looking at here and i'm looking at the drawing um there is no work um being done inside the 50 foot buffer zone here mm -hmm. Um, at the closest point, it appears to me that the limit of work line is about 60 feet away from the wetland boundary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be correct. And there's very minimal uh, of this project bordering the, the, the wetland. Correct. It's like I said, probably 98% of it is, is not even affecting the wetland. Correct. Okay. So, well, um, I guess then we'll just keep it on our project monitoring list and uh, look at it. Um, Bethany and Rebecca, um, I remember from when we first went out there and we had the notice of intent filing with this, there was uh, some concerned abutters, if you will. Um, so I guess all I'll say is once the work commences, um, don't be shocked if there's a couple of phone calls that come in. <laughs> Thank you for the heads up. Yep. Um, next item was 53 Old Farm Road, and I think we're pretty much all set with that one, unless anybody else had anything to add. Oh, damn. Um, no. And, and I'm sorry, I'm going to backtrack a little bit to the ANRAD. I missed this note that I had down here um, for a condition, and I think it's okay for us to discuss this. Um, the only other condition that I thought we should add is the, uh, the existing flagging needs to be maintained, which is a, a pretty standard thing, but this will be a completely different order of conditions for us. So I, I think... I'm thinking we're looking at just two conditions, if that's okay uh, with the commission. Yeah. I have to um, check with Mark Stinson. I haven't done an ANRAD order of conditions before, so the form might end up looking the same, um, but I'll check with him and I'll let you know either way. Um, okay, but a, a lot of the boilerplate that we have in there for an NOI order of conditions, we definitely don't need to have in for this. Right, right. Okay. All right, so we can see a draft of that before the next meeting and stuff. Yep. Okay. Um, 
Anybody else have any uh, thing under project monitoring? Okay, hearing none. Uh, moving forward to other business. Uh, 2020 annual report. Time for that to be done again. <laughs> when is that due, Bethany? Uh, February, I think it's the 19th. Okay. You did send out the, uh, the totals for NOIs and all that, right? I believe so. And what I've done for the other boards, I don't remember what has been done in the past uh, for their commission, but for the other boards, I drafted up a annual report for the new year for 2020 and I sent it out for them to review. And I'm happy to do that for the commission as well, unless you'd prefer to draft it yourselves. Um, in the past for uh, Francis and Elizabeth that are newer, um, I've been drafting them um and and writing them and then we uh get to get, approve them as a commission at a meeting and essentially what we do is talk about what's going on in the commission and and we put in the totals for the year of um, notices of intent rdas certificates of compliance um, and we can also comment and uh, put anything else in there that we want but it, it goes in the town report that's available to all town residents but as far as I'm concerned, uh, that would be fantastic, Bethany, if you want to do a draft. And, sure. and then we can just, you know, edit I'm try to get it out to you all by the next meeting. Okay. All righty. The uh, next item that we had on our agenda was the. Uh, Scanic River watershed plan and we received an email from uh, Ryan O'Donnell regarding that and I see that he is in the audience and uh, if we could bring Ryan in to talk about that for a minute that would be great. Hello, Ryan. So um, I am the water quality monitoring coordinator for the Connecticut River Conservancy. And we are, I think we actually just applied for a grant to the Connecticut DEEP um, to do a watershed plan, watershed based plan for the Scantic River. Um, and that watershed extends up into Massachusetts. So I was just, um, contacting the commission to kind of let you all know that we were starting that, that we, or that we were applying to hopefully do this project. And um, should we get the grant, we would be including the parts of the watershed that are in Massachusetts um, in the plan. Um, Mass DEP has like a tool online to do Massachusetts plan, so we would use that. Um, but we would be holding stakeholder meetings, and um, since your town is in the watershed, um, we would be inviting someone or all of you to attend uh, meetings. Okay. There is, a, albeit small, I'm going to say, there is a little portion of the Scanic that actually flows through East Long Meadow. Um, I've fished there ever since I was a little kid, used to catch a lot of trout in there used to actually catch more of the native uh, brook trout that used to be in there. There's not as many around now, but I don't fish there as often as I used to. Um, but it, it is an excellent cold water fishery. Um, and yeah, I'd be uh, very interested in, in working on this. Um, but so as, as far as our involvement right now, you, you're all set for doing the grant, correct? We don't need to be involved with that. Yeah, we just asked for a kind of informal interest. I took being invited to this meeting as interest in the project existing. Um, so we just listed you as a potential partner um, in the grant of someone who would be invited to meetings. Um, okay. So. Um, sounds great. I guess uh, keep us appraised and uh, yeah, we'd love to be involved with it. Yeah, I'm really um, happy that Connecticut, you know, is including the Massachusetts portion. It's Sometimes the funding stops 
at the state lines, but as we all know, the watershed itself doesn't stop there. Yes. So. Have you contacted Hamden? Um, yes. Okay, good. And then Munson um, and Wilbraham are also portions of that are in the watershed, but I didn't hear back from them. Okay. All righty. Well, yeah, well, keep us appraised, Ryan, and uh, look forward to working on it. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All righty, the uh, next item, I had the uh, older agenda. The next item was the trail mapping. Um, that email came out also. Bethany, could you go over that real quick? Sure, so um, PVPC, our regional planning um, commission is working on a, a regional planning app that you could have on your phone or computer that would map all of the trails, existing trails in the region. Um, I thought that would be a really great idea to hop on for Isang Meadow because at the moment if you google trails in Isang Meadow it only pops up with the rail trail even though we do have other trails in town. So I thought that would help get us on the map, um, create some awareness and interest in the other conservation land in town and maybe help generate. Yeah, um, yeah, that would be good. We can extend on those trails. I, I know there was something, I was wondering if you have it, there, there was some sort of East Long Meadow trail mapping thing that there's some document that used to exist. I have not seen anything. Um, I actually went out to Brown Farm and took a picture of the trail mapping there because I could not find a copy elsewhere. Okay. Wasn't there something on our webpage that had the, the trails? Wasn't no, it, it has the area, the conservation lands in town marked out, but it does not have the trails marked out. Oh, okay. so I took, I went out, physically went out, took pictures, and then I put those pictures up. Um, but, you know, there's some water damage to that document that's up by the trails. There's also some other trails by um, the elementary school, I believe, that are not marked. Um, that would just be a step in the right direction, I think, for the town. But I'm open to any and all comments from the commission. Commissioners? <laughs> no, I think it would be a worthwhile thing. Um, it looks like they're uh, they're looking for matching funding as well from from the towns. Right. So that would be um, an in kind match, which means we would just volunteer our time, and they would calculate that as um, as contributing. So you'd have to put in a certain amount of hours and that would equal a certain amount of money, which would be the match. In the letter, he says 76 hours approximately for $2,500. Right. Yeah, and I believe that's for the entire year. So it seems uh, pretty reasonable. And I would also include the time I spent on it as well as Rebecca. Okay. So it would, I think it would come out to a reasonable amount of time for the commission. But they're talking also here about a cash cash match of twenty five hundred dollars. That's another option. So in kind is usually either a cash amount or it's by volunteer hours. So they give you an option of how you want to contribute your time. If you don't have a lot of staff, like some smaller towns, then they would opt for the cash option. But then they're looking for uh, an annual cash contribution of $500 max to maintain this over the long term. I see that in there as well. Well, can I read from the letter? Yep. It says any mass trails grant requires 20% match. As such, we are looking to each of our partners for an equivalent value of $2,500 to contribute to this grant. The best way to do this would be through in-kind match through staff or volunteer work in reviewing and updating your trails information to be uploaded to the app. To meet that $2,500 amount, 
we estimate an annual commitment of about 76 hours of time using the current independent sector rate for volunteers in mass of 32.96 an hour. Likely salary and benefit rates for professional staff are higher than volunteer rate, so the number of hours required would be fewer. So that, that fits us. I mean, the, the second option is for people who have, like Stephanie said, for communities that have less than 7,000 people and don't have the professional staff or volunteer conservation staff. So I think the first option fits us so we wouldn't have to pay any cash. Is that, that's what you thought too, Bethany, right? Correct, yep. Um, it, it definitely seems like a worthwhile endeavor to me. Yeah. Um, and and I, don't, I don't necessarily foresee people traveling from Worcester to hike trails in East Long Meadow, um, but it would be great for people that are in town, residents and, and abutting towns, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be able to come in and walk some of our trails. And people in Springfield might want sure. to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good population. Yeah. It also helps um, in future grant applications to say, hey, look, we're really serious about our trails. Here's another initiative that we're working towards. Right. And then if we wanted to develop more trails, we could use that as an example for grant funding. Exactly. So it, it almost sounds to me, Francis, like you want to take the lead on this project. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> Bethany's going to take the lead, but I'm willing to help. I am willing to put in volunteer time with it. So I think, I if, think the, if, if the commission is at a consensus, um, I do need to send back a letter of support. Um, you may have seen attached in the email. So I think if you make a formal um, approval to move forward with the letter of support, that would be the next step. Um, formal approval, you that, that requires a vote, you think? Correct. Yes, okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to support and be involved in the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission trail mapping endeavor. So moved. So moved. Seconded. Thank you. All right. Roll call vote. Uh, Francis. Aye. Tom. Aye. Tony. Aye. Elizabeth. Aye. Jeffrey. Aye. And I am a yes vote also. All righty. Um, next one I just had was uh, policies and procedures for the commission. We did add one more for the Boy Scout um, oh, bench. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, the pictures went out. They looked pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did did he put any? It doesn't look like there's any finish on on the wood. Is it just raw wood? I thought he was going to put a uh, finish coat on. Yeah, we asked. We asked for that. Yeah. He um, he didn't specify, but I certainly can ask. Yeah, I it just invited him to attend tonight, but I don't think he's here. Yeah, it just I mean, I think, I think the packages look great, but uh, you know, if there's no protective coating on those, <laughs> they'll start deteriorating. Yeah, I'll try and swing by this weekend and look at them. I actually do go out there and walk the Brown property every so often. It's a good hiking trail. Yeah. I think he did a good job. They look great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think what the Eagle Scouts are requiring of um, the Eagle Scout is for a vote for approval of the work done by the um, by the commission. So I don't know if you'd like to take a vote or you'd like to wait to see if he has applied the finish. It's up to you. Commissioners? Well, I, I think we can vote to prove it as, it as as they are. I mean, he, he, they, they, he's built them and they, they're in place and they look good. 
history. But can can we add to that letter that we're I don't know how to, how to say this, but at, at our meeting with him, we did ask that he provide some kind of weatherproofing finish on them, and he said he would. Please let us know when that's complete. I mean, just so he doesn't forget that that's a part of his, a part of his agreement, you know? But we can definitely, you know, thank him for doing this project. I think that's important. Was that a motion you made? Well, not really. I don't know how to put it in the form of a motion. Oh, can you make the motion, Craig? Um, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the benches installed at the Brown property um, and based on a request that a protective uh, finish be applied to the wood. So moved. I'll move. <laughs> Through the chair, Craig. Yes, sir. Do we really need to have them say put on a fishing coat? I think we should be just really happy, and this town should be happy that they even went out there and, you know, built those benches. I'm sure they'll go out there and put some preservative coat on it. But I don't want to get too technical. I just, you know, I think it was a great idea what they did. They completed the job, and... Um, I just think a simple letter saying thank you would be sufficient. As far as the protective coating, I think they know what they got to do. Well, if they want them to last, you know. So there's been an amendment to the motion. Um, I mean, no, no, that's up to you people. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I don't see why we should get so technical over it. They built the benches. I mean, I think we should be very happy that they did it. And Jeff said they look great, and I had no doubt that they wouldn't. So I would leave it like that. I mean, that's just my opinion. Okay. And and, and that's fine. I mean, it's like, you know, you know, it's like someone buying you a gift, and uh, they say, well, gee, the next time, can you wrap it better? You know, that's what it sounds like to me. And, and that's fine, but so in order to follow proper right. procedure, so moved. that would be an amendment to the motion. So, so moved. Okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded with an amendment to remove about putting the finish on. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve the amended motion. So, so moved. Second. Second. Yes. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, we'll go to the roll call vote. Francis? Aye. Tom? Aye. Tony? Aye. Elizabeth? Aye. Uh, Jeffrey? Aye. And I am a yes vote also. Um, Okay, moving on to policies and procedures of the commission. Um, did anybody have anything? Hearing none, I had a couple, <laughs> as always. Um, the packets, um, where we get them dropped off, um, if we could go back, is it, is it too much to ask to just, I know sometimes with the drawings and that sort of thing, it was difficult, but I often, struggle to get up there and most of the time Jeff picks up my packet for me um, but if we could still get them emailed with the agendas and the uh, the minutes that would be helpful we don't necessarily need to email all the drawings if it's in a packet we're picking up but but could we go back to getting that at least that email to us yep that works for me so is that just um, the the application part and the site plans, or uh, the site I'm plans just, are hard to look at on the computer. Right, then right. that's what I'm just looking for. Yeah, maybe just the applications and, and minutes in the agenda. Sure. You know, could, yeah, that's all. But yeah, the site plans and all that, I would say at this point, I, I don't really need them emailed if we're picking them up. Um, well, any other commissioners comments? much easier to read in person than on a computer <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm fine with picking them up but 
also email is fine. You know, then I can look. I, what I do is refer to it on the computer. So yeah. email that works too. Okay. Um, I, um, the only other one I had was uh, Bethany has sent an email out um, and re addressing some of the legal expense issues. Um, but I was wondering if you could provide for us because I believe our legal expenses would have been the uh, review on 53 Old Farm and the two open meeting violations. And I was wondering if you could get us the, the bills or the totals for that, because I'm just curious as to what that cost. Yep, I do have a copy in my, uh, in my office, I believe. So I will scan it in tomorrow and email it out. Okay. Um, and the other one that I guess we needed to bring up was reviewing of the open meeting law complaint. I'm assuming everybody received a response uh, from the town attorney. Uh, mm -hmm. Essentially what had, we had, the issues were corrected. Um, and I guess in my opinion, what we got from the state was don't do it again. <laughs> um, so I definitely won't be sending emails out about that. And and I would caution other members of the commission, even for uh, attending meetings and, and that sort of thing, just be real careful. You don't need to hit reply all, just hit reply. Because <laughs> I do see some that, that I get that the reply all was it. Um, so yeah, we can all just keep that in mind and do our best not to be doing that. Um, with that, um, I'm pretty much all set. Did anybody else have anything? No. No? Well, I do have one thing. We, um, I'm working on a new master plan for the town and we will be having a visioning session um, on Saturday morning, February 13th. Let me just triple check the date. What kind of session? It's a visioning session. It's for anybody involved in town who lives in the town. Um, to come and talk about the vision, East Long Meadows vision for the next 10 years, where you want the town to go, all those things. And it will be led by an engagement consultant group, um, myself and some staff from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, so anybody's welcome. I'll be putting out a lot of posters and flyers and sending emails. So if you see that, that's what it's about. You're more than welcome to join us. Okay. Where will that be? That will be over Zoom. Mm -hmm. oh. Do you have the start time of that? What time does it start? Uh, it's from 10 a.m. until noon. Thank you. All righty. Um, anybody have anything else to add? Nope. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so quick, Jeff. <laughs> Tony, get the laptop with the camera. <laughs> hey, I feel safer this way. <laughs> uh, is there a second there? Pretty funny. Second. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Francis. Aye. Elizabeth. Aye. Tony. Aye. Tom. Aye. Jeff. Aye. And I am a yes vote also. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Rebecca, Bethany. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Good evening. Good evening.